If you attended one of the 2016 Beef Feedlot Roundtables earlier this year, you heard Iowa State University's Dan Loy explain how the content of distillers' grains is changing. Iowa and Nebraska are the two largest producers of ethanol in the country, and research shows it can also benefit the livestock industry. A 2014 study from the University of Nebraska described how Nebraska's cattle industry maintained an economic advantage over other states due to the ready access to distillers' grains, a byproduct of ethanol production. We talked with Dan earlier this week to learn more about their background and use in the cattle feeding sector. Well, distillers' grains uh, traditionally have been a very important uh, uh, factor, you know, over, since the ethanol era in about 2005, 2007 or so, uh, it, it, in terms of what's happened in terms of inclusion of distillers' grains in Iowa and Nebraska, uh, they've become the, a very valuable resource in terms of uh, competitiveness and in, in lowering their their costs and in uh, improving the the regional competitiveness of cattle feeding in the upper Midwest. How is the content of distillers grains changing? Well, this um, th this um, important value that distillers grains have played over the past few years is changing. Uh, we're seeing that distillers grains uh, are. Uh, uh, the ethanol industry is becoming much more efficient in terms of extracting value out of distillers grains, in terms of uh, capturing more of the nutrients that may be there for other purposes. For example, uh, the, the oil content has reduced over the past four or five years from uh, about 10 to 11 percent typically to around 7 to 8 percent. So we've seen about a 3 percent reduction in the oil content of distillers grains. And we feel like that's part of the reason why distillers grains have, uh, based on a lot of research, had more energy and more uh, uh, value in terms of feeding value than corn grain has. How important is that, Dan? What does it mean for the diet and rationing in the feedlot? Well, it changes, it changes the nutrient value and it changes the economic value. Uh, you know, historically distillers grains have been shown to have depending on the inclusion level, especially wet distillers grains, as much as 130 to 130 or 40 percent of the energy value of corn grain. Um, at, with each 1 percent reduction in oil content, we find that that changes that feeding value by about 1.6 percent. So when we go from that 10 to 12 percent oil content to something that's closer to 7.5 or 8 percent, we would expect at the same level of inclusion to see about a 5% reduction in feeding value. The good news is that, it, that even at those reduced levels, wet distillers grains, modified distillers grains, which have become the predominant uh, type of distillers grains fed in Iowa and Nebraska, even at that level, it still has more energy than corn grain, which is the, the base energy uh, feed that we feed to beef cattle in the feedlot. Does that mean the producer doesn't need to change the diet that much, or are there still alterations that need to happen? Well, the question relative to making al alterations really depends on economics. Uh, as, as I mentioned, it's often priced relative to corn grain. And, you know, we've become accustomed over the past five to seven years of distillers grains pricing somewhere between 60 to 90 percent of of corn grain on, uh, on a dry matter basis. So we have an economic cost of 70 to 90 percent historically of corn grain and a feeding value of 120 to 130 percent of corn grain. So the incentive both from an economic and a nutritional standpoint has been to feed just as much as we can until we start seeing problems. So inclusions of 30 to 35 percent were very typical. Today as that price um, differential has narrowed and because of the reduced energy value we're now seeing inclusions that might be more typical in the range of 20 to 25 percent and it's very localized as well depending on how close you are to an ethanol plant depending on the specific plant that you're dealing with and your local corn basis uh, we see a broad range of inclusions that are right for each cattle feeder so it's it's, a, it's something that each cattle feeder needs to work very closely with their nutritionists based on the nutritional value of the feed product that they're dealing with and also the economics of the alternative feeds that they're, they're dealing with as well. What do you anticipate for the future, Dan? Does the 
content of distillers grains continue to change and does it change with perhaps the rise of cellulosic ethanol production? Well, the, the, the cellulosic ethanol and uh, the changes and improvements in technology of the ethanol industry are, are something that I think we'll continue to see distillers grains evolve as we move into the future. Uh, right now, the ethanol in plants are, are extracting a small amount of oil, uh, you know, three to four percent. Now, that may be 20 to 30 percent of the oil that's in the product itself, but um, it, that's a fairly simple process where they uh, centrifuge the solubles, extract the additional oil, and the distillers grains, other than that, haven't changed very much. There's technology available to do um, processes like pre-fermentation fractionation, and with that, we get a stream of byproducts that are similar to what we see with the wet corn milling industry. Those are plants that produce corn sweeteners, and they produce uh, low-fat feed products like, um, like uh, corn gluten feed and also high-protein feed products like corn gluten meal. We could see the ethanol industry employ that technology if economics are right. The other thing that we're seeing, and we've done some preliminary research with this at Iowa State, is a secondary fermentation where the ethanol plant uses cellulosic enzymes to extract some of the corn fiber. And the corn fiber, in addition to the oil, is one of the things that makes distiller's grains very valuable to beef cattle. Uh, because fiber, while it's not utilized very well, not digested very well by monogastrics, humans, um, poultry, and, and swine, it's digested almost completely or nearly the same as corn grain, for example, by ruminants. So that fiber is a very important resource. Um, in the, the one study that we've done at Iowa State where they did go through a secondary fermentation and extracted some of the cellulose, it did reduce the energy value compared to normal distiller's grains. However, it's still, in that study, it still was higher than corn grain in terms of its feeding value. So I think even though we are extracting some of the value, reducing some of the energy content and the feeding value of the distiller's grains, it, the, we're finding that it's still very competitive with corn. It will still be a very good resource as we go into the future uh, for cattle feeders, in, both in Iowa and Nebraska as we move forward.